No, that won't do. We've got a project. So here's the rundown. I've only really got a tiny, tiny bit of PTSD from the troubleshooting and all the stuff that I had to do to recover Linus's petabyte. Well, uh, most of it anyway. It was really a bad situation. It was, it was very close to a complete loss of everything. ZFS absolutely saved the day here. The more uh, that I go, you know, shoulder deep inside ZFS, the more I realize that this level of recovery would never have been possible without ZFS. And I've done some really crazy stuff. Okay, yeah, I do worry a little bit that that's Stockholm Syndrome, but I mean, I, I've attempted similar recoveries in other scenarios. So this is coming from somebody that, you know, I had a failed flash drive and I ended up loading all of the sectors into a relational database because there's more than one copy because of the way that flash does garbage collection. And then use the relational database and some other parameters to write SQL queries to pick which sector was most likely. Uh, you couldn't pay me money to do that because it's so insane. Because why? I don't need grocery money that bad. And geez, the recovery did get me thinking though. Am I protected enough? Do I have enough storage stuff to really worry about this? Do I, I, I think I need replication. So this data recovery and another data recovery that I did recently, the flash drive, you should check out that video if you didn't see it. Um, got me thinking. Let's do, let's really like do the three, two, one plus one backup strategy and set everything up offside and go nuts, but I have to fix up some space for that because it's a little rough right now. Remember old Yeller? <laughs> Even though last year, 45 Drives gave us a brand new super awesome server, this thing's still running as a backup system. And that's part of the problem. Even though we've got a crap load of two terabyte hard drives, it's uh, not enough. Those drives are aging out. We're starting to have problems. This is the new system that the 45 drive system will replace. Or maybe we'll put the new 45 drive system in as the old one and then take the one that's a year old and turn that into a backup system. Although I probably won't do that because we could just drop it right in and be ready to go. Now we're basically already using a lot of the machinery of ZFS to do our backups. Basically ZFS can keep a running journal and so when we commit new files and everything to our primary system, it adds an entry to the journal. And so when the job runs on a periodic schedule to update this system, it can basically look at the transaction log and say, okay, I need to get everything from here. And it's just a list of blocks. So it's very fast and it's very efficient. It absolutely blows the doors off of anything like rsync or robocopy or anything like that, because it literally does not have to scan any of the old information on the drive. It can spot check a few things and just confirm check sums. You kind of get that automatically when you're doing a scrub. But moving a data set from one place to the other, the data set is exactly identical. And that's one of the reasons why 45 drives is really awesome is because they make all that basically point and click super easy. And it's a line of support that you can actually call and say, hey, this is what we're trying to do. We need these data sets. We need these optimized for SQL. We need these optimized for virtual machine storage. And they'll help you do that. Our current in production system from 45 drives, we named it uh, Standard IO 54 or Studio 54, Standard IO 54, because as we've got it set up, it'll hold 54 drives, 30 plus 24, so Standard IO 54. Because we're using so much larger drives this time around, 14 terabyte, we're not gonna need quite as many drives. So the single Q30 chassis is all we're gonna need for our backup appliance. And that is 14 times 20 worth of storage. 
And that Q30, we don't even have to fill it up. We can store 280 terabytes. Well, our raw capacity is 280 terabytes. We're gonna lose a little bit to ZFS overhead with only using 20 slots in a 30 bay system. That's pretty awesome. It's here. This is just the chassis. This is definitely a two-person lift kind of a thing. So I reached out to 45 Drives and, and they said, you're still building stuff out of rocks and sticks and garbage, right? And I said, yes. Not only that, but I'm playing in the mud. But I don't mind getting my hands dirty and doing a little, uh, you know, tinkering, a little, a little innovation with garbage. I'm thinking about off-site ZFS replication, and here's what I had in mind. I said, hey, how about we set up replication off-site, but on a newer platform, not something made out of garbage, and get some newer drives. I sent them some pictures of all of this. <laughs> oh boy, it's a mess. We're basically in a dugout root cellar. But, you know, you gotta understand, root cellars are naturally cooler. They used them in the days before refrigeration to keep food fresher longer. And so it's always been kind of cool down here as a result. It's gonna be perfect as long as we don't overload it with a ton of computer equipment. If we don't overwhelm the space's natural cooling ability, that means I'm gonna spend less on air conditioning. I can preserve the data, a sort of YouTuber mountain of data preservation. Maybe not even just for me, but maybe we can turn this into an offsite backup shelter of sorts. I mean, cinder block walls and being far underground, that's pretty secure. It's gonna take some work. I plan to insulate the walls with high R factor foam panels and backfill the ceiling with uh, some kind of fiber foam cell insulation. Oh, and of course, a new electrical. Well, everything down here is basically awful. What? I think maybe somebody thought somebody could live down here. We're like, it's not even a basement. It's like a basement under a basement. Listen, this is gonna take a while and it's gonna be awful. I'm just gonna get angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. So let's Thanos snap this into about a month in the future. Plywood walls, what? Not just plywood, foam panel, plastic construction, glue, and now maybe a layer of drywall or something on top of that. You can probably hear the echo, that's the metal. Now I can mount anything on the wall anywhere, no matter where it is, which is awesome when you're mounting things like fiber optics and switches and whatever to the wall. Oh, and I did hear back from 45 Drives. We're a go. We got a second branded new Q30 that we're gonna set up here and for the offsite replica and backup. I love this. This is so great. Thumb screws for easy access and then boom, 30 drive bays, hence the Q30. Solid construction. Definitely would make good body armor. Disclaimer, not advice. So when you pick up one of these, yes, it does come with a rack mount set of rails. We'll get to that in just a minute. But this is the chassis. And they even have a 60 bay chassis, which is just the same, except it's got another two rows of drives. In the rear, we can see that we have dual redundant power supplies. Good job, 45 drives. 30 drives, 45 drives, it's just a number. Plus, we've also got a dual 10 gigabit NIC, as well as two HBAs that are installed, host bus adapters, so that we can plug in our large amount of drives. And for the drives. This is a case of drives which I assure you is entirely unlike a case of the Mondays. Look at all those drives. Would you say it's the case that I'm excited? Oh yeah, I definitely would say that. Drives don't like it when you do that. You shouldn't do that. It's all drive, there's no PCB, it's all drive. So this is the Seagate Exos 14 terabyte helium filled hard drive, ST14000NM001G. These are the SATA versions of drives because 
is what this chassis is designed for. Putting them in is pretty easy. Ta-da! And done. They're held pretty securely in the metal case, so vibration, not really much of a concern. Now there are other options for drives. You could do serial attached SCSI, but these are made to be storage appliances. And these are designed for, you can buy one, one's gonna work great, but you could buy three or four or five. And if you have problems with one chassis, the entire chassis you can eject from the cluster. So you don't really need a lot of internal redundancy in order to accomplish your goals. The big difference between SAS and SATA hard drives is, is that SAS drives have a second electrical path from A to B. The price difference between SAS and SATA is pretty negligible anymore. But if we have a controller failure or something like that, it's really not worth the extra cost to have a redundant path to each particular drive. Instead, when you have that kind of a catastrophic failure, it's better to just eject the whole cluster. The other thing is that with ZFS, that's a pretty recoverable situation from ZFS, uh, the ZFS standpoint, if you address it pretty quickly. If you have a cluster that contains multiple chassis and one of them dies, you could lose your entire pool. But generally, as long as you address that pretty quickly, you know, shut everything down, clear the errors, fix whatever, bring it back up, you can recover in that situation. That's like ZFS will say, okay, something started to go horribly transactionally wrong at this transaction ID. Let's roll back to that transaction ID. And then from there forward, you're good. As long as the data is generally accessible. If you have a controller that murders a bunch of your drives, then you're gonna be in a data recovery scenario anyway, unless, you know, of course you have a redundant cluster where it's like, you've got enough replication members so that the loss of an entire member doesn't hurt you, which I think would be my recommendation. Here is our fiber line. Now I'm still gonna mount this to the wall and do some other stuff, but I have sort of pre-terminated it with the LC connection and made sure that it's, it's good. And we have up to a 10 gigabit connection all the way back to the office, a few kilometers away. So I've got my offsite backup and I can plug in my fiber and get a link light into my ingenious switch here, although I need a little bit more permanent installation. With the fiber optic connection and the upgraded power, I've got basically everything that I need to be able to do off-site backup. Now I could have done this with old hardware, but remember spinning rust has a fleeting lifetime. And with this, I can set up enough space for Steve or Linus or any of my friends to do off-site backup much farther away for them than a few kilometers. Who's up for a YouTube or half-assed data preservation project? Well, I mean, you're gonna need a lot of storage and space to put it. And for me, the Storinator, the Q30 from 45 Drives has basically done that in droves. It's, it's an appliance and it's got a software stack that I trust with my data. I've, I've come to know and love ZFS and the ZFS ecosystem. And what's more, 45 Drives has been there, done that with a lot more installations for these than I have, so I trust it. Thanks Linus for letting me fix your stuff, uh, no pressure. And thanks 45 Drives for supporting my mad science. And uh, please be sure to check them out in the link below. You know, you never know, offsite backup, storage appliance, your office probably isn't doing as good a job as they could. I've got a bit more work to do here in my mad lab. It's probably gonna take a few months, but I'm really looking forward to being able to use this to do more content and more kinds of content. I mean, heck, my electrical panel's got over 200 amps of spare capacity, even accepting the 200 and some volts, 220 volts that I've already run here for my server rack. So that's pretty exciting stuff. And thank you all. Thank you to the support with viewers like you has helped what helps make this uh, possible. So I'm really excited by all this. It's really, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't believe I have offsite fiber optic stuff. Maybe now I can get some sleep. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. <laughs>